Hello. I've been preparing the ground out here. That's the brassica cage just there. Got onions and garlic here. And this little space outside the brassica cage uh, has had plastic sheeting on it for the last um, couple of months. And that's killed off the last of the weeds. And so over the last few days, I've been putting down um, paper feed sacks and covering it with wood chippings. And that's just, that's just a cosmetic thing really. Uh, so my plan today uh, is a bit of a celebration because um, we seem to have had, by the look of it, the last of our frosts for this year. So it was potentially frosty last night. Now we haven't had a frost for four or five days now, um, but I have covered anything that I thought might be slightly tender um, just in case. So uh, I'm now confident the weather reports are saying there won't be any, uh, there won't be any more frost till uh, in the middle of, well it's the first week in June my weather forecast goes to. Well if we have frost in June it'll be a bit of a sad and sorry state of affairs. So, so I'm going to assume they're over and I can now plant uh, out some of the tender plants and this area uh, I'm going to put courgettes in. So I'm going to go and get them, place them where I want them and then I'll get planting them. I'm not putting any courgettes in here because I want a pathway, a clear run uh, from here uh, down to the compost bays. So I think maybe not quite so under the tree just there, but I think this will work quite nicely. There are more courgettes going in uh, over on that side. Actually, let me show you what I've done over there. So this is uh, where the turkey run uh, and the brassica run was last year. Um, so the turkey run came along and sort of zigzagged across here uh, and then went squared off. So I've put down some weed suppressing membrane. I've got in uh, a row of courgettes along there. Now I put those in before I realised there was going to be frost this week. Uh, so I've been covering them over. Luckily, they're absolutely fine. Uh, and in the back there, I've got uh, a, just a small block of chard. And then yesterday, uh, I had a really nice, so a bit of a play in the garden. And I fixed a pallet uh, onto the shed. I put this upright into the ground to give it some stability and fixed the, uh, this upright onto that pallet. And I put a piece going across the top and then I fixed another pallet to this one. So there's actually a piece along the adjoining piece of wood across the back. Uh, and again, put an upright into the ground. Well, that wasn't very stable. So I then banged in uh, a metal rod, which is actually now the same level um, as the pallet, but it has made it uh, fairly secure. That's not going to tip over. So then, another piece of cross. These cross braces uh, are not uh, really for stability or strength at all. They're much more uh, for aesthetic reasons so that this echoes uh, the bean pergola that I made last month. So after I had this frame, I then uh, went and got these pieces of uh, twisted willow. So this is the corkscrew willow. Mr. J and I had to cut back quite a lot of this uh, from our tree last year because uh, it was getting quite invasive in the vegetable garden. It was starting to split in the weight of it. 
Anyway, we cut most of the uh, twiggy pieces off and just had these uh, branches left, which have just been sitting um, in the entrance to the food forest upright in a pallet, uh, a bit like they are now. Um, but they were getting to the point where every time I walked past them, I was uh, feeling like I was going to poke myself in the eye. I knew I needed to move them. So I've put them in here. I have secured them. Uh, at points at the top here uh, with some baling twine. So this one, it can move, but not very far because it's attached there. Uh, this one is pretty well jammed in, so I haven't done baling twine at all. This is a hazel pole, uh, which had snapped off, but I've just got that in for extra security. And uh, these ones aren't attached yet, but they are pretty well jammed in. Uh, to the base, so I have attached it up here. This is my squashes, so I'm going to plant some squash in the ground here. And this ground uh, doesn't look fantastic, but it was the main run from the chicken palace out into the, the turkey run, which had chickens in it before that, so it was the chicken run. This was their main walkway, and it has had two, three years now I think, uh, of chicken and turkey poop on it uh, and then lots and lots of wood chips uh, put on top to uh, help that bit of the run stay dry uh, when it's rained heavily. So under here uh, this ground is pretty good. So my plan is to plant uh, six, maybe seven even squashes along this row and then train them so they'll go up, they can scramble over the shed roof, they can go up and down again, they can go wherever they want. I'm so excited, I'm really pleased with how this looks um, and that I'm going to be able to use this space. And then yesterday Mr J and I uh, started looking at ways that we could replicate this uh, further across this area. So uh, although I have put one pallet uh, going across that way, I think I'm going to be bringing it uh, to the midpoint and then doing another two pallets going across that way and again and out to give the uh, squashes more space to climb and scramble. And I'm hoping that the whole of this area uh, is going to be productive in squashes this year. I have grown an awful lot of them. Uh, so I'm hoping that I can get most of them in here. I've got other pieces of fence that they can also scramble up. But this I feel really pleased about. So back to the courgettes. Um, I'm going to clear a space. Uh, yep, yeah, look, I can tell this is where the brassicas were because there is uh, the stump of a brassica. Right, the other thing that was here uh, was stinging nettles and where I can I will get any roots of the stingers out before uh, I start planting. But what I don't want to do um, is pull up the roots of the tree there, uh, so I need to be quite sure what I'm picking up are stingers, but um, these are yellow and stinging nettle roots are yellow without a doubt. So there's a bit of a planting pocket there with uh, no new stinging nettle roots in it that I can see. And this one uh, is neatly labelled courgette, which actually means I can't remember which it was. But um, I've only grown three types of courgettes. Um, in these pots. Uh, one uh, is a golden courgette called Gold Rush. I'm pretty sure that's not this one. 
uh, I think this is a green one, which means it's either uh, called green bush or Genovese. Genovese. Um, so that's the first one going in. And what I will do, um, when I've got them all in place in these pockets, is bring uh, some shop bought compost. I've got um, some wool and bracken based compost. I will pop the label in uh, just so that in case there's any doubt as to what it is, I can check it up. I use as my kneeling pad. Um, it's a cushion that um, my sister had after she'd had um, a hip operation and she bought this um, to support herself while she was in recovery and she no longer needs it. Uh, she gave it to, to me to see if I wanted it and it is perfect as a kneeler. Uh, the, the plasticky rubbery outside of it is now getting <laughs> cracked and, and elderly but uh, it has done me really well. So uh, this ground is, um, it's very clay, look I can just squeeze this into a ball um, and at the same time I can also feel the sand uh, in amongst the clay. So it's, uh, <laughs> it's heavy soil uh, at the top and once you get through that layer of clay, uh, there's a lot of sand. Hand uh, supporting the plant so that it doesn't, do you know, it took me a long time to learn uh, not to just kind of catch the plant, but to actually support it as we go. And this way, it doesn't actually damage the, um, the main stem of the plant by putting your hand like that. If you're supporting the soil, the compost rather than the actual plant, uh, it gives it a better chance. Now this one, um, I can see uh, is one of the yellow ones. So it's a gold rush. Uh, that's the variety that I've got for the yellow ones. And I can see that because the leaves are going yellow. And last year, uh, the leaves of my courgette started going yellow. I had a bit of a panic that there was something terribly wrong with the soil uh, in terms of nutrients. Had a bit of a look uh, online and, uh, and also had a look at the description of this variety and it said <laughs> that it will produce yellow leaves. Um, and that's actually one of the attractive features is that it produces these yellow leaves. So less panic, <laughs> now I know what it is. And where I can, I'll do this uh, little wall uh, of material around it, which is what I do uh, with pretty much all my plants uh, as I plant them. I create this little well so that the water will stay uh, near the roots rather than just running off particularly important on the um, downward slope uh, if your garden is sloping downwards um, so particularly important on that side and then it just slows the water down stops it just all uh, washing away concentrates it by the roots of the plant that you're watering so I'm going to get on with this and so wherever you are in the world and whatever you've got planned for today I hope it's a good one and I also hope, well, you'll join me again next time.